The developmental stage of your favorite video games includes all types of things that you will never see in the finished product. Even if the game is great, it could have been made even better by including some of these concepts. See just how different the Mario, Final Fantasy, and Resident Evil franchises would have been if these changes were included. Check out our awesome video, but before you do that, click subscribe. You'll join our notification squad and be the first to know of any new content. Zombie Animals in The Last of Us The Last of Us features a future that no one wants to experience. When a fungal strain hits the human population, characters go through multiple stages of infection, each one more hideous than the last. Even as good as the game was, The Last of Us could have been even better if developers helped the game reach its full potential. One of the biggest changes that could have been featured in the game was the introduction of a level 5 infection. This type of infection would present some of the craziest mutated humans you've ever seen. Based on concept art released for the game, the level 5 infection would have looked like a Rubik's Cube of body parts, fungal growth, and all-out terror. Another element that was hinted at in the game was the presence of zombie animals. We did get a slight teaser with a giraffe scene in the game, but it presented the ultimate scenario where Joel would go do battle with some infected animals. Thankfully, Sony has announced that a sequel, The Last of Us 2, is in production and we could see both zombie animals and level 5 infections included all within the same game. The Boss Rush in Bloodborne In Bloodborne, each boss is uniquely designed and vividly detailed. They are the highlight of each level and provide a lot of great action along with plenty of scares. As in typical fashion, each level of Bloodborne features one of the big boss battles at the end of the level. If a special planned level had come to fruition, then players would get the chance to come face to face with these baddies a lot more often. As Bloodborne was going through development, the creators of the game planned a special boss rush level. This level would pit players against all of the bosses one after another. The extremely challenging level would give players only one single life to use against each of these bosses, making the boss rush an extreme challenge to pass. No matter how hard it was, Bloodborne fans would have loved to take on these monsters one right after another. It should have been put in the game as a fun bonus feature that could have been unlocked after defeating the regular game. The Monsters of Resident Evil 4 Despite the huge success of the game, Resident Evil 4 went through many production issues before it was finally released. Rumors have persisted that there were four different versions of the game before the final title was released. While these alternate versions were not up to par with the final release, they did have some elements and villains that would have been great for the series. One of the villains that should have been included was Hookman. The slow walking zombie had a massive hook that would serve as a brutal weapon in the game. Early previews of the game showed Hookman in action, but fans were disappointed that he did not appear in the final game. Similar to Hookman was an evil monster known as Electric Man. Concept drawings showcase his massive size and ability to conduct electricity. Other villains that were scrapped include Living Doll, an evil girl doll that serves as a nice precursor to Annabelle. Mixing all of these characters in as minor monsters in the game could have added even more scary elements to play with. Dead Space 3 Horror Elements The Dead Space series features a compelling mix of zombies and space travel. The action horror titles are like a blend of Halo and Resident Evil all mixed into one. The success of the unique concept continued with the game Dead Space 3. The game continued the story of the traveling astronauts and also introduced a number of new elements including online co-op play. While the game features a lot of great action and replay value, the developers went through a lot of changes before the final title was released in 2013. Upon its release, fans loved the additional character controls, smooth gameplay, and advanced weapon options to choose from. Despite all of this, there was a lot of cut content that could have made the game even better. In an effort to focus on the co-op play, the creators of the game ended up focusing more on action elements than the horror elements that were the core of the series. Original plans intended to focus on adding more psychological horror, hallucinations, and dealing with the natural horrors of feeling alone in space. It would have created a better atmosphere, provided more scares, and stuck with the roots of the game. Various moons could have provided more scares, including a snow and ice-filled moon, along with some of the darker elements of various spaceships. Some parts of the game could have had a little bit slower pace to really take in the scares and stay true to the core of the series. The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker Cut Dungeons 
As Link explored the lands in his sailboat, players got to visit several islands, explore dungeons, and battle villains in an attempt to rescue his sister. The game already features a massive collection of islands for players to explore, but that's not everything that would have been available in the title. Because of a lack of space and development time, there are some dungeons in the game that were actually cut out. As great as the game was, it would have been even better with these dungeons included. While there's no definitive list of the eliminated dungeons, some keen-eyed fans were able to figure a lot of them out. The first one was going to be featured on Great Fish Isle. The stormy weather helps cover up the fact that dungeon had been destroyed there instead of allowing Link to explore it. Two other islands, Fire Island and Ice Ring Isle, were other rumored areas where dungeons were supposed to be. Players can just go to the areas and collect items without needing to complete a dungeon to do so. The creators of Wind Waker have alluded to these dungeons but will not admit to which ones because they were all recycled for future Zelda games. So that means that if you're a huge Zelda fan, then you've likely played them all. Monster Bosses in Metroid Prime Can you only imagine how much better Metroid Prime would have been with the addition of a few extra bosses? One of the main boss characters considered for Metroid Prime was Mother Brain. The giant brain with one eye is a classic Metroid villain and would fit in perfectly with the game. Mother Brain is typically featured in two different styles. The first showcases the brain in a giant glass enclosure. The second is an upgraded version of the brain that attaches to a large monster-like body. Metroid Prime would have featured both versions of the Mother Brain as the boss battle progressed. Another villain that was going to be included was the massive and scary-looking Kraid. What originally started out as a cartoonish character was now developed into a scary monster with claws and spikes protruding from its body. The inclusion of Kraid would have elevated the boss battles and made for one of the best battles in the game. Metal Gear Solid 5 Episode 51 If you thought that Metal Gear Solid ended with some more story left to tell, then you would be right. The stealth game and open world environment creates an unforgettable experience, but there's a whole section of the game that the creators forgot to put in. After several criticisms of the lackluster ending, fans discovered a lot of extra content through the collector's edition of the game. While you cannot play through the levels, you do get a chance to see the true ending to the game through the special content known as Episode 51. Concept art, voiceovers, and rendered cinematics all blend together to showcase how the rest of the game would have played out. It would have made a great story, added a lot more to the game, and helped make it feel more complete as players got through the levels. It would have been even more impactful if the scenes were actually used in the finished version of the game. PC players of Metal Gear Solid 5 have discovered a lot of lost content for these levels as it would have been entitled Chapter 3 and been a whole new section of the game. Hidden Monsters in Shadow of the Colossus In Shadow of the Colossus, players do battle against 16 different monsters, each one getting more crazy than the next. When the game first went into development, the Colossi were not just imagined as the final 16 that you go up against. The creators of Shadow of the Colossus originally wanted to make the game feature 48 different monsters. The number 48 was not just thrown out there, either. A lot of thought and design went into these monsters. Many of them went through multiple stages of planning, including drawings, animations, and in-game demos. Players were able to get a glimpse at this potential content through the official art book and guidebook for the game. Drawings detail monsters with wings, powerful weapons, and four-legged creatures that have gone through some massive mutations. Even just using a dozen of these monsters would have greatly expanded the gameplay and given players a lot more to battle against. Obviously, the limitations of the PlayStation 2 forced many of these monster designs to get abandoned. The game was originally released in 2006, allowing rumors to spread for years that these colossi would be available in a sequel for the game. No sequel has been announced yet, but if it ever is, then they already have a whole library of monsters to choose from. Exploring Nephilim in Final Fantasy XV Fans waited years and years for Final Fantasy XV to get released. When it did, it was almost instantly hailed a masterpiece that blended an open-world concept with classic Final Fantasy gameplay elements. While playing through the game, many players couldn't help but notice that there was a whole world left to explore. While traveling on a train, players may notice the land of Nephilim in the distance. What initially looks like a gorgeous background is actually a whole developed part of the game that was never used. 
Some smart players have managed to find a glitch in Final Fantasy XV that allows them to explore the land known as Nephilim. Filled with beautiful terrain, water areas, and plenty of space to explore, the land of Nephilim showed so much more potential for the Final Fantasy game. Even though the game dealt with so many delays, just one more delay could have done so much with this area. If you do manage to get the glitch working, it's fun to explore the ghost town and see all of the areas that could have developed even further for in-game content. The next generation game still has the potential to release the world of Nephilim as some type of DLC content. The DLC download could unlock the world, add more content, and live up to its full potential. Co-op in Super Mario 64 When Super Mario 64 was first released in 1996, it completely changed the Mario franchise forever. Mario transformed from a side-scrolling plumber to a 3D open-world explorer that could do a lot more than just collect coins and shoot fireballs. The game was an instant hit and has seen a lot of re-releases through the years as players love to play the adventures of Mario over and over again. Despite all of the success found within Super Mario 64, there were some glaring omissions. Some of them was the mysterious disappearance of Luigi. Originally, Luigi was going to be the character controlled by the second player. The developers had planned on making Super Mario 64 a largely co-op game that included split-screen action and the ability for each player to explore separate parts of a level. Luigi and Mario could perform double teams, defeat bad guys, and collect all of the stars at a much faster pace. Unfortunately, the Nintendo 64 was not powerful enough to support the broad scope of ideas for this game. This left Luigi on the cutting room floor and created endless rumors for years about his lack of appearance in the game and various fictional ways that he could be unlocked. Wow! There you have it. What cut content do you think would have made games better? What content could have made games worse? Are there any games that we missed? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to The Gamer on YouTube so you can stay up to date with all of our awesome videos. Have a good one!